Welcome back to Autofilm Studios. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I scan and edit my film photos. I don't do film photography too often as it can get to be pretty expensive, but when I do, I like to scan my photos at home as at the place I get them developed. Scanning them in high resolution can be quite expensive. You don't need like the most expensive gear to do this. Um, I'm just using the cheap Sony camera, the a6400, and a vintage lens. The only lenses I have are vintage lenses. <laughs> That's what I'm shooting on right now. You can maybe use a phone, but um, digital cameras work the best. Don't scan your film with film cameras, that's pointless. Before we get into it, if you don't know what film negatives are, basically when you take a picture on film, the light hits the film, and then it like darkens the image, the parts of the image that are bright and the parts of the image that are dark stay light. So it's kind of like the opposite of what your image will actually look like once you uh, scan it and invert the colors. So um, it looks kind of like this, um, and then you'll have to like do col color correction to make it look better. So that's a brief description of what film negatives are. Let's get into it. Now I have to take down all this crazy setup I did for this talking head. All right, so. First of all, of course, you'll need your film negatives. Next, you'll need a camera. You don't have to have anything too fancy, as long as it takes photos and has interchangeable lenses or some sort of macro function, if it's like a point and shoot. So I like to have a nice clean de desk space, so I'll have to take my screwdrivers off this thing, move all my iPhone boxes, there we go move my lenses. So now that I got um, clean desk space, next thing you'll need is some sort of light source. What I do as I don't have a um, proper light for this, my only light is um, that thing. So like I can't put that on the table. <laughs> you need like a small light source. What I do is just get white, like a white backdrop on my phone, turn the brightness all the way up, and boom, there we go. So next we need our film scan, film negatives. You can see the negatives are right there, but if, if I invert the color right now, you'll see it looks very bad. So next thing you'll need to do is get rid of all light. Well, first of all, you should probably set up your camera. This is not going to work as it's like bendy. So one thing you'll need is a, um, a way to like prop this up off the light source. Um, if you have like a real light source, it should be a lot easier, especially if you have a diffuser, but I do not have that. So what I normally do is just get a lens hood through this and drop it. I have some ND filters in here that I need to remove. Now I can put the, um, lens hood on there and then put the film on the lens hood and I have good space here because one thing that putting it directly against that is sometimes you can see the pixels if you scan them so you'll need to do that. So setting up the camera. So one thing you'll want to do is create as much distance from the sensor to the front to the back of the lens as you can. So. If this means stacking and adapters, do that. But if you can't do this, another way to um, focus very closely on a camera is um, with something called diopters. Now diopters, you can find them in different sizes. I have these in 55 millimeters. They're like magnifying glasses for your camera. That's what everybody says. <laughs> I'm actually going to get my Sony lens on my Sony camera, which I rarely do if I can even find that lens. Because it has autofocus and it speed up this process, I don't know. It's in camera aperture control and it also has pretty good minimum focusing distance even without diopters. So to get the diopters installed, 
you just screw them on the front. I'm gonna take off my lens hood since that looks silly. <laughs> so what we do next, bring the tripod up all the way. So the next thing you'll want to do is move your, um, your film to the edge of the desk. That way your camera can be looking down. So, um, move it to the very edge. So that's pretty good. And then next, if your tripod does this, so unscrew this thing, so then your camera can be like that. Next thing you'll want to do is do that, and then rotate this like trying to do here is make your camera exactly aligned with your film so you'll need to find a good spot on your desk where that is the case like right here and then my film of course fell off so right there perfect and then I turn my camera on and see can't see anything. Turn my camera. Um, you can see it's aligned pretty well. Bring your camera into manual focus mode if it is an autofocus lens, and then bring your focus all the way close. So then. Next thing you'll want to do is bring your tripod down until you get the focus. Right about there. I will zoom in all the way and refocus it. And then right about there is where I have the focus. So right there, I have moved the tripod to the level where my camera is focusing on the film. So as you can see, it takes up basically the entire frame. So the next thing you want to do is turn on your light source if it's not already on. And make sure your camera is shooting in RAW. Basically what RAW does is it retains all the detail. Next thing you'll want to do is put on a timer. And after that, make sure your ISO is at 100 so you don't get any noise or grain. Then you'll want to close your window and then next go over to your light in your room and turn that off. Now, the, now this footage from this camera is going to look very bad as it's not great in low light. <laughs> You're gonna wanna make sure there's no light. All right, so once you got like minimal light in your room or wherever you're doing this, want to turn on your phone. Okay. Next you'll want to get your light source back on if that's your phone. Turn your phone on, get the white screen. So next get your film and your camera and on your look into your camera screen and then just basically align your film with your camera so you can see the entire frame just like that uh, make sure what that whatever is holding up your film in this case the lens hood make sure that that is not in frame or else it'll get weird vignetting all right so next to make sure everything is sharp punch in on the image if you have a camera that can do that focus on it What's annoying with these iPhones is they turn off after a while, so that can be annoying. So you'll want to punch in on your image and just make sure everything's um, in focus. And then next, bring your aperture down to like F10 or something. On here, I'll do F13 because it's a F5.6 lens. And then hit the shutter button. It'll count down, and then I'll take the photo. But just to be safe, I like to take a few. So I'll take another one. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'll bring these photos into DaVinci Resolve because that's what I use to edit because I'm too poor to afford um, editing software. Alright, so if you're uh, shooting Sony, you'll need to export it into a .tif file. Alright, so over here under effects, you'll need to add an invert color node right there. So then you can see we got a slight image of what it kind of looks like, but you'll notice it's really cool. So I'll bring that temperature up a bit so like there. And you'll also notice it's heavily desaturated. So how we fix this is by bringing the shadows down quite a bit and the highlights up. So add in a bit of a curve there. And then you'll have to play around with the color temperature a bit more, bring it kind of warm, but that's kind of green. So sometimes you'll need to actually just go into the gain, bring the gain a bit red like that. And then you'll get some nice color there and then bring the lift also a bit towards the red. All right, so next I'll want to bring down the lift a bit. So lift is the shadows. And then you might also want to bring up the gain. You can look in your um, scopes to see where the colors sit at. You might need a dual screen for this. And then I think I might actually bring down the lift a bit more. And as you can see, it's really bringing out the blue color. So I'm going to want to push the lift to a warmer color a bit more, push the gain that's a bit too warm. So you really have to like play around with these colors until you find something you like. Um, as you can see, we also got in some chroma noise from the Sony camera probably, which is, isn't the best. It could be JPEG artifacting too. I'm not entirely sure. About there is pretty good. So that's basically my workflow for editing these. Sometimes I bring down the shadows even a bit more. I think I'm, I like this a lot more. Um, I might also try to get the greens to be less oversaturated. It's really hard to get these images graded properly due to how you take them. Another way is to calibrate the white balance of the image with um, with whatever the color of the white is. That should help with the colors being more accurate. However, as I was just using my phone, that was a lot harder <laughs> as I didn't have any clue what temperature, what color temperature it was.